If you're going for your commercial, one maneuver that you will have to master is called the Lazy 8. And although the name makes it sound easy, there is more to this maneuver than you think. So in this video, we'll look at what a Lazy 8 is, how to fly it, and the most common mistakes that you need to avoid. Hi, I'm Greg from Pilot Institute, the online ground school that makes aviation easy. First, what is a Lazy 8? Well, it consists of two symmetrical and alternating 180 degree climbing and descending turns. It sounds confusing, but if done correctly, your flight path should look just like this, a pattern that looks like a lazy figure eight. The word lazy also comes from the way that you fly this maneuver. One of the objectives is to have as little control input as possible. So what's the point? Well, it will teach you how to fly with the finesse of a professional pilot. It's a test of aircraft control and coordination over varying speeds and attitudes. You will need to anticipate and correct for the aerodynamic tendencies of the aircraft. There are three that you need to watch out for. Picture an aircraft making a 360 degree turn. Notice how the path of the inner and the outer wing make two circles. Well, the outer wing circle is larger than the inner wings. This means that during the turn, the outer wing travels a greater distance than the inner wing. Since they turn at the same time, this means that the airspeed of the outer wing is greater than the inner wing. The higher speed creates extra lift, causing the aircraft to bank further into the turn. Now this creates what's called an overbanking tendency. This tends to happen at low airspeed and high bank angle, both of which are present during the Lazy 8. You'll notice it when you see the bank increase as you pitch up and slow down. Now your job is to prevent the aircraft from banking too quickly or too far. The next aerodynamic factor is related to the ailerons. Can you guess what it is? In this example, as you roll to the left, the aileron on the right will deflect down, increasing the camber and creating more lift. The opposite happens on the left wing with the aileron deflecting up, decreasing lift. Now this lift imbalance is what causes the roll. As the aircraft rolls, there's a change in the angle at which the air hits the wing. Now during the roll, the lift vector on the left wing tilts forward and on the right wing, it tilts backward. Now this imbalance causes the aircraft to yaw to the right. But the lift vectors aren't the only ones affected here. Remember that when there is lift, there's also induced drag. In this example, the right wing has more lift, which creates more drag. Now this imbalance further adds to the yaw. This yaw here is called adverse yaw, and you can counteract it by applying rudder in the direction of the turn. The last aerodynamic factor is also the most common, left turning tendencies and several different factors cause them. But what they have in common is that they are the strongest at low air speeds. Now, during a lazy eight, they are most noticeable at the top of the turns. In this position, the aircraft is at a high angle of attack and at low air speed. Now, keep in mind that adverse yaw reduces left turning tendencies in left turns, but increases them in right turns. Now, because of this, you need more right rudder when turning to the right. Okay, now that you know what you watch for, it's time to prepare for the maneuver. First, set your altitude and your airspeed. For this maneuver, the minimum altitude is 1,500 feet above ground level. Now, ensure that you know the appropriate airspeed for the maneuver. Lazy 8s are typically flown at cruise power settings below the maneuvering speed. Next, select your visual reference point. Select ground references at the 45, 90, and 130 degree positions on the side of the first turn. They should be far enough away that their position remains fixed in relation to the airplane. Choosing a visual reference from the 180 degree point is tricky since it's actually right behind you. Use the starting heading as a reference point for the reciprocal heading, but make sure that you don't fixate on your heading indicator. Now that you have your visual references, you need to scan for traffic. Perform at least two 90 degree clearing turns. You should also be making a radio call at this point. Transmit your location, altitude, and intentions on the local frequency. Okay, now you're ready to begin. Let's examine each part of the Lazy 8 step by step. First, carry out the pre-maneuver checklist. Determine the wind direction and select a heading that will allow you to turn into the wind. Set your heading bug and configure for straight and level flight. Start the maneuver by making a climbing turn towards the 45 degree reference point. Begin with a small bank of about five degrees and then gently pull back on the flight controls. As the aircraft pitches up, the airspeed is going to drop. This is where you will see the overbanking tendency in action. The trick here is to use the overbanking tendency to your advantage since the aircraft will continue to roll all by itself. 
Use opposite aileron input as needed to keep the aircraft from overbanking. When you reach the 45 degree reference point, you need to be at a 15 degree bank angle. You should also be at your maximum pitch up attitude at about 10 degrees. As you continue to turn, allow the bank to increase and the pitch to decrease. As the nose fall, maintain back pressure on the yoke to keep it from dropping too quickly. When you reach the 90 degree reference point, you should be at the maximum bank angle of 30 degrees with the nose on the horizon. This is also the point where you will reach the slowest speed at about 5 to 10 knots above stall speed. As the nose gently slices through the horizon, begin gradually rolling out of the bank. At the 135 degree reference point, you should be at the maximum pitch down attitude of 5 degrees. Now your banking goal here should be about 15 degrees. Continue rolling out until you are wings level. Now at the same time, start raising the nose slowly. It's time to adjust your pitch and your bank so you reach the 180 degree point at the starting altitude with the wings level. Your airspeed should be the same as when you enter the maneuver and your heading should be the reciprocal of your initial heading. To continue the maneuver, begin a climbing turn in the opposite direction and repeat all of the previous steps. Now once you're completed, it's time to trim the aircraft back again for cruise flight, perform any post-maneuver checklist, and then also it's time to start applying for airline jobs. But not so fast. Here are five of the common mistakes that we see in this maneuver all the time. Number one, clearing turns will confirm that there is no conflicting traffic around you. Failure to complete them puts you at a huge risk and you can even end up failing your practical test. So make sure that you do your clearing turns. Number two, your reference points must be clear, distinct, and far away. Those that are hard to see or too close can set you up for failure. So take your time and select solid reference points before you even begin the maneuver. Number three, if you deviate from your target airspeed or altitude, make sure to be proactive and make those adjustments. So while you should allow for the aircraft to naturally change its attitude, you should also still be in full control of the aircraft. Number four, this one is a killer. Failure to maintain coordination causes a poor pattern symmetry, unbalanced flight, and possibly over-controlling the aircraft. As a result, you might end up chasing the aircraft all the way around the maneuver. So keep an eye on the turn coordinator and make sure to use your rudder. Number five, it's easy to fixate on the instruments during the lazy eight, but you have to look outside. Get into the habit of briefly scanning your instruments while maintaining an eye on your reference points. The FAA recently added a new maneuver to the instrument checkride that they might also be bringing to the commercial. So to find out more, check out this video right here. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one.